Join us again as we explore the groundbreaking contributions of futurist Raymond Kurzweil. In this part 2, we delve into his influential work in AI and technology, including his predictions on the singularity and his impact on the field of machine learning. Get ready to continue our journey into the mind of this modern-day mastermind. Kurzweil describes his law of accelerating returns which predicts an exponential increase in technologies like computers, genetics, nanotechnology, robotics, and artificial intelligence. Once the singularity has been reached, Kurzweil says that machine intelligence will be infinitely more powerful than all human intelligence combined. Afterwards he predicts intelligence will radiate outward from the planet until it saturates the universe. The singularity is also the point at which machines' intelligence and humans would merge. Kurzweil spells out the date very clearly. I set the date for the singularity, representing a profound and disruptive transformation in human capability as 2045. Exponential Growth Kurzweil characterizes evolution throughout all time as progressing through six epochs, each one building on the one before. He says the four epochs which have occurred so far are physics and chemistry, biology and DNA, brains and technology. Kurzweil predicts the singularity will coincide with the next epoch, the merger of human technology with human intelligence. After the singularity, he says the final epoch will occur, the universe wakes up. Exponential growth is deceptive, nearly flat at first until it hits what Kurzweil calls the knee and the curve then rises almost vertically. In fact, Kurzweil believes evolutionary progress is super exponential because more resources are deployed to the winning process. As an example of super exponential growth, Kurzweil cites the computer chip business. The overall budget for the whole industry increases over time, since the fruits of exponential growth make it an attractive investment. Meanwhile, the additional budget fuels more innovation which makes the industry grow even faster, effectively an example of double exponential growth. Kurzweil cites two historical examples of exponential growth, the Human Genome Project and the growth of the Internet. Kurzweil claims the whole world economy is in fact growing exponentially, although short-term booms and busts tend to hide this trend. Computational Capacity Since Kurzweil believes computational capacity will continue to grow exponentially long after Moore's law ends it will eventually rival the raw computing power of the human brain. Kurzweil looks at several different estimates of how much computational capacity in the brain and settles on 1016 calculations per second and 1013 bits of memory. He writes that $1,000 will buy computer power equal to a single brain by around 2020 while by 2045. The onset of the singularity. He says the same amount of money will buy 1 billion times more power than all human brains combined today. Kurzweil admits the exponential trend in increased computing power will hit a limit eventually but he calculates that limit to be trillions of times beyond what is necessary for the singularity. The Brain Kurzweil notes that computational capacity alone will not create artificial intelligence. He asserts that the best way to build machine intelligence is to first understand human intelligence. The first step is to image the brain, to peer inside it. Kurzweil claims imaging technologies such as PET and fMRI are increasing exponentially in resolution while he predicts even greater detail will be obtained during the 2020 when it becomes possible to scan the brain from the inside using nanobots. Once the physical structure and connectivity information are known, Kurzweil says researchers will have to produce functional models of subcellular components and synapses all the way up to whole brain regions. The human brain is a complex hierarchy of complex systems, but it does not represent a level of complexity beyond what we are already capable of handling. Beyond reverse engineering the brain in order to understand and emulate it, Kurzweil introduces the idea of uploading a specific brain with every mental process intact to be instantiated on a suitably powerful computational substrate. He writes that general modeling requires 1016 calculations per second and 1013 bits of memory, but then explains uploading requires additional detail, perhaps as many as 1019 CPS and 1018 bits. Kurzweil says the technology to do this will be available by 2040. Rather than an instantaneous scan and conversion to digital form, Kurzweil feels humans will most likely experience gradual conversion as portions of their brain are augmented with neural implants, increasing their proportion of non-biological intelligence slowly over time. 
Kurzweil believes there is no objective test that can conclusively determine the presence of consciousness. Therefore, he says non-biological intelligences will claim to have consciousness and the full range of emotional and spiritual experiences that humans claim to have. He feels such claims will generally be accepted. Genetics, Nanotechnology and Robotics AI Kurzweil says revolutions in genetics, nanotechnology, and robotics will usher in the beginning of the singularity. Kurzweil feels with sufficient genetic technology it should be possible to maintain the body indefinitely, reversing aging while curing cancer, heart disease and other illnesses. Much of this will be possible thanks to nanotechnology, the second revolution, which entails the molecule-by-molecule -molecule construction of tools which themselves can rebuild the physical world. Finally, the revolution in robotics will really be the development of strong AI, defined as machines which have human-level intelligence or greater. This development will be the most important of the century, comparable in importance to the development of biology itself. Kurzweil concedes that every technology carries with it the risk of misuse or abuse, from virus and nanobots to out-of-control AI machines. He believes the only countermeasure is to invest in defensive technology, for example by allowing new genetics and medical treatments, monitoring for dangerous pathogens, and creating limited moratoriums on certain technologies. As for artificial intelligence Kurzweil feels the best defense is to increase the values of liberty, tolerance, and respect for knowledge and diversity in society, because the non-biological intelligence will be embedded in our society and will reflect our values. The Singularity during the singularity, Kurzweil predicts that human life will be irreversibly transformed and that humans will transcend the limitations of our biological bodies and brain. He looks beyond the singularity to say that the intelligence that will emerge will continue to represent the human civilization. Further, he feels that future machines will be human, even if they are not biological. Kurzweil claims once non-biological intelligence predominates the nature of human life will be radically altered there will be radical changes in how humans learn, work, play, and wage war. Kurzweil envisions nanobots which allow people to eat whatever they want while remaining thin and fit, provide copious energy, fight off infections or cancer, replace organs and augment their brains. Eventually people's bodies will contain so much augmentation they'll be able to alter their physical manifestation at will. Kurzweil says the law of accelerating return suggests that once a civilization develops primitive mechanical technologies, it is only a few centuries before they achieve everything outlined in the book, at which point it will start expanding outward, saturating the universe with intelligence. Since people have found no evidence of other civilizations, Kurzweil believes humans are likely alone in the universe. Thus Kurzweil concludes it is humanity's destiny to do the saturating, enlisting all matter and energy in the process. As for individual identities during these radical changes, Kurzweil suggests people think of themselves as an evolving pattern rather than a specific collection of molecules. Kurzweil says evolution moves towards greater complexity, greater elegance, greater knowledge, greater intelligence, greater beauty, greater creativity, and greater levels of subtle attributes such as love. He says that these attributes, in the limit, are generally used to describe God. That means, he continues, that evolution is moving towards a conception of God and that the transition away from biological roots is in fact a spiritual undertaking. Kurzweil does not include an actual written timeline of the past and future, as he did in the age of intelligent machines and the age of spiritual machines. However, he still makes many specific predictions. Kurzweil writes that by 2010 a supercomputer will have the computational capacity to emulate human intelligence and by around 2020 this same capacity will be available for $1,000. After that milestone he expects human brain scanning to contribute to an effective model of human intelligence by the mid-2020. These two elements will culminate in computers that can pass the Turing test by 2029. By the early 2030 the amount of non-biological computation will exceed the capacity of all living biological human intelligence. Finally, the exponential growth in computing capacity will lead to the singularity. Kurzweil spells out the date very clearly. I set the date for the singularity, representing a profound and disruptive transformation in human capability, as 2045. 
The public availability of AI information can have both advantages and disadvantages. On the one hand, it may lead to greater accessibility and use of the technology, which could result in new and innovative applications that benefit society. On the other hand, there are also concerns about the ethical use of AI and the potential negative impact it could have, especially as the technology continues to evolve and advance. If you reach this part of the video, I sincerely thank you and I want to add that this only scratched the surface of Ray Kerr's will work in life. Leave a comment down below if you would like me to go deeper into his work. Until next time, stay in time.